I would like to elaborate a little bit on the whole Large Hadron Collider panic that some people are feeling. Because, after all, I'm sitting here laughing at people who claim that the world is going to end as a result of the Large Hadron Collider experiments. But maybe I should try and explain a little bit about it, so that maybe you'll also understand why nobody involved in the experiment is in the slightest bit worried that anything bad is going to happen, and why they're not worried, and why I'm not worried, and why you shouldn't be worried. Okay, first of all, if you're here at what's going on in those experiments, you might be a little bit afraid because you, you hear about them reproducing the um, conditions at immediately after the Big Bang, for example, or you hear about them, um, you know, possibly creating miniature black holes. And how scary is that? After all, you know what a black hole is. It gobbles up everything in its neighborhood. You cannot possibly escape from it, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So if we created one here on Earth, surely that would be the end of all of us. No, not quite. You see, you need to understand a little bit about what a black hole is. You don't need to understand the maths completely. I don't understand the maths completely. But you just need to understand enough to know why you don't need to be worried about this. And that doesn't require you to be a rocket science. I should be able to explain this to you, staying true enough to what is actually going on, for it to be at least somewhat valid, and for you to understand why there's nothing to worry about. So, a black hole is created when you compress mass into a volume so small that the gravitational pull just beyond where the mass is is so great that nothing could escape it. Now if you have a mass, any amount of material, there is a distance from the center of that mass that is known as the Schwarzschild radius, that if all the mass was contained within that radius, then the mass would become a black hole, and anything that would wander to within that radius would not be able to escape anymore. That's the simple relativistic explanation of what a black hole is. But let's, first of all, look at what that means in practical terms. For example, if the whole Earth would be compressed into a black hole, how big would its Schwarzschild radius actually be? The answer is less than a centimeter. So you're talking about the whole mass of the Earth compressed into a space about that big, and you would have to get to within that distance to actually be in a position where you couldn't escape anymore. If you were a meter away from it, you would certainly feel the gravitational pull, and you would have to do something about it. But you could, in principle at least, hope to escape. That's the whole Earth. If you're looking at much smaller masses, the Schwarzschild radius becomes progressively smaller. Something like, for example, the size of Mount Everest, would be would have a Schwarzschild radius of one nanometer. A human being, something as big as me, would have a Schwarzschild radius of 10 to the power of minus 25 meters. What is that? In practical terms, a proton, an elementary particle like a proton, has a diameter of 10 to the power of minus 21 meters. So you could fill 10,000 human-sized black holes side by side across the diameter of one proton. That's how small they are. But I can see you thinking, what does that matter? It's still a black hole. Every elementary particle it bumps into, it will swallow up. It will slowly but steadily, maybe at first, grow and grow and grow, and eventually it will still swallow up the whole planet. No, it won't. And in order to understand why that is the case, you'll need to understand, again, at a basic level, one more principle that's at play here, and that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. 
at its basic level it states that you cannot determine to within an, uh, an arbitrary level of precision both the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time. There is always a level of uncertainty. Now in a black hole that means that a black hole could not be completely closed to the outside world. Once you're inside a black hole you could not have a zero chance of escaping the black hole because that would be in violation of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. What that means is, as Professor Stephen Hawkins has pointed out, that every black hole glows. Every black hole emits radiation. The way that works is that even though anything that's contained within the black hole cannot escape based on normal physical principles, everything that's in a black hole has a chance of being found anywhere in the universe and a chance that it is that it will be found outside the Schwarzschild radius of the black hole is incredibly small and smaller even as the bigger a black hole gets but it's incredibly small but not equal to zero and as a result occasionally particles find themselves outside the Schwarzschild radius and can then escape as radiation. That's all well and good, but what does that mean with regard to the Large Hadron Collider? Well, that's where it becomes important to understand what we're smashing into each other here. We're smashing single ions of lead into each other. Now, a human-sized black hole would already be incredibly tiny, but a black hole that consists of the masses of two atoms pushed together will be vanishingly small. And then the Heisenberg principle or the Heisenberg um, uncertainty principle pretty much overwhelms the black hole in the sense that the mass that's inside it has a very real large possibility of finding itself outside the Schwarzschild radius of that black hole even though technically it couldn't escape. And as a result, a black hole that is as small as what could possibly be created in the Large Hadron Collider would evaporate almost instantly. And that is why you don't need to worry. It is vanishingly small. The chances of it even bumping into one other elementary particle inside the Large Hadron Collider is practically zero. Even if it did, it would only gain the mass of one elementary particle and it will evaporate within less than an infinitesimal fraction of the blink of an eye. And that is why nobody is worried about what's going to happen there. So just enjoy the science and watch this space because hopefully we'll discover a lot of interesting new things about reality.